بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ان دس ویڈیو وی ول ایکسپلین انورٹڈ ایل آسٹیاٹومی اٹ از مینلی یوز فار لینتھننگ آف دا ریمس اٹ ہیز دا لیس رسک ٹو دا انفیریئر ایلویولر نرو دا انورٹڈ ایل آسٹیاٹومیز آر فل تھکنس آسٹیاٹومیز آف دا ریمائی اف پرفارم بائی لیٹرلی دے ڈیوائڈ دا مینڈیبل انٹو ٹو اسمالر سیگمنٹس that contain the condyle, posterior border and coronoid process and a large segment consisting of mandibular body including the teeth and chin. Osteotomies are performed posterior and superior to the inferior alveolar canal. This is a procedure that can be employed for posterior repositioning, mandibular rotations, shortening and lengthening of the posterior ramus and large mandibular advancements with bone grafting. To illustrate the procedure, we will here show the correction of mandibular retrognathism. Do a proper planning for inverted L osteotomy. The osteotomy is usually performed using a submandibular approach, especially for difficult movements and those requiring bone grafting, uh, asymmetric craniofacial deformities such as hemifacial microsomia. Alternatively, the procedure can also be performed using a trans-oral approach for some simple movements. The sagittal interior cut for an inverted L osteotomy can easily be performed from a trans-oral route. It is a full thickness osteotomy usually done with a reciprocating saw which stops 8 to 10 mm interior to the posterior border of the mandible but posterior to the inferior alveolar canal. The vertical component requires the use of an angulated oscillating saw or piezoelectric instrument when performed from a trans-oral approach. When using a submandibular approach, a reciprocating saw can be used for vertical osteotomies and an oscillating saw can be used for horizontal osteotomy. Mandibulo maxillary fixation is performed to position the large tooth bearing segment to the desired relationship with the maxilla. A prefabricated surgical splint or wafer may be used to facilitate this. For mandibular setbacks, the proximal segment will rest lateral to the repositioned distal segment. This smaller one is the proximal segment and this larger one is the distal segment. So this segment, this proximal segment, this will be lateral to the repositioned distal segments. For large interior and inferior movements, a gap will result between the proximal and the distal segment necessitating the need for bone grafting is shown here. Care must be taken to maintain the normal fossa condyle relation and to avoid condylar displacement. This is usually achieved by manual repositioning of the condyle bearing segment superiorly into the clinoid fossa. Internal fixation is always necessary with an inverted L osteotomy to prevent the temporalis muscle from rotating the proximal segment superiorly. Internal fixation is difficult to perform through a trans-oral approach because of problems with excess. It is easier if an external approach is used and then can be 
performed using mini plates and monocortical screws. Bone plate or bicortical screws osteosynthesis can also be performed using transbuckle trocar instrumentation. After completion of osteosynthesis on both sides, the MMF is released and the resulting occlusion is checked against the pre-planned position. The splint may be fixed to the maxillary teeth with a few thin wires and left in place during the healing phase to allow for neuromuscular adaption and position control. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.